check, 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 microphone check. I love to see students become activists. The idea that um, I'm able to reach a huge variety of students and possibly show that um, passion-based learning, um, constructionist um, pedagogy where kids get to construct things and learn and from the act of constructing physical objects and um, videos and songs and, and real world things. Um, when they're doing that and I'm um, a champion of that, um, it feels really good. The best way to communicate uh, what they've achieved or embody the whole point of what they're doing, which is to get the word out, to raise awareness, to make a change, the way to do it is to create a video. It, it has to be organic. It has to come from them. If they're not motivated to do that part of it, then why push? They got a lot out of it. So in that case, I did the work. However, with a lot of other projects, they enjoyed editing and they edited the whole thing themselves. Seeing kids watch other students view their projects is also exciting. Hi, my name is Brittany. And today, I'm going to eat this beetle. Because invariably, there are a number of kids saying, oh, I want to do that. I want to do that too. I want to make my own chewing gum. You know, oh, I want to pass out things to the homeless. And that's just the most authentic way that you know they've reached, um, their message has gotten out. Uh, it's real. I think educators who are interested in doing technology-enabled social action, they should create a wide variety of possible issues um, and do a lot of the curating ahead of time. Sure, the kids can do their own research and should do their own research, but providing sort of a baseline of high engagement resources that get kids really excited about an issue, have serious games, um, videos, infographics rather than just facts laid out on a web page. Uh, doing that, I think, it provides a good substrate that they can build um, beautiful products um, on top of. I think it's important to be sort of fearless as a teacher when it comes to what you introduce to the students as possible topics because they are already exposed to 99% of that. Um, but they don't see it as something that they can address and work with within the confines of the school. And when you give them permission, when you say to them, there's nothing off limits, whatever's touching you, whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're uh, passionate about, there is no reason why you can't go for it. As far as the resources I provide them, uh, I've been working on my website techbrarian.com for about four years. I'm constantly updating it with issues that are happening now. You know, if, if Eric Garner is what's being talked about, then that's what gets included in police brutality and issues surrounding that. If it captures somebody's interest, I'll do a five minute mini lesson of sort of what's going on in the news, what's happening. Um, that ca has captured my imagination and see if it triggers something in them. And in addition, students are constantly contributing to it. And I welcome all teachers um, from around the world to use this as a resource. I think the way that you engender the mentality that I am a builder, I am an inventor, is by having a makerspace in the truest sense, where you just have a huge amount of resources lying around from Legos and Arduinos and creating dedicated spaces for uh, video recording with green screens um, and uh, having LEDs and batteries and um, scientific tools like microscopes and 
um, pH level uh, strips, things just all over the place, then it tells them that they are inventors that can grab and mix and touch and create. Uh, so that's part of it. I think another part of getting students to feel that they are innovators and inventors um, and activists are um, showing them other work that students have done. So it sort of builds on itself. As the years go by, um, our portfolio of work grows and there's nothing more powerful than a student seeing another student that looks like them, that talks like them, that was at this school or continues to be at this school doing something that matters. And the fact that we post these on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and Vimeo, putting it out there says, and it's not gonna stay in this classroom, this is real. This is something that is way, way, way beyond these walls. And, and that gets them excited. That actually looks pretty. One of the main lessons that I've learned being the tech librarian is that technologies of all sorts, doesn't have to just be digital technology, they're all just tools for something bigger. There always has to be a reason for applying those tools. And in our case, it's enabling social action. It has to be that you actually are interested and it's fun to you and they'll sense that and it is contagious. And you have to be like, oh God, I really wanna learn that. All right, I'm just gonna learn the basics and see where it gets me and do that with a lot of different things. Teaching is an art and, and knowing that kids um, have reached the point where they do need uh, a little bit of help to get past a certain Arduino code that is not compiling and sending. Knowing that and having that instinct is a big part. Having them have alternative activities that completely relate to what they're doing, but um, until you have the time to address the, the, the wall they've reached, um, having them take another angle while, you're, while you, they're waiting. Um, and also bringing in other kids who've done similar projects. So when kids are doing scratch projects and they reach a point where they can't um, have their game express what they want to or have the sprites interact in the way they want to, then sometimes I'll pull kids from the eighth grade who've already completed projects that have some sort of similarity to what they've done or they have that skill set and have them mentor. Uh, the younger students. Bringing the products that they create to a larger audience. And for example, we are, we've opened up an Etsy store and the kids have been making jewelry with a message. Any of the students who create that, uh, they will actually get the money. Um, the materials uh, don't cost a lot. And in giving them the money, from my perspective, uh, it's making them into activists and entrepreneurs. And so that's exciting, and that is a way to continually go beyond the walls of the classroom. There's been a few schools that have um, been interested in having um, screenings of the students' videos. So that's in the works. We're trying to coordinate that. Um, there's a recording studio um, on 14th Street in Avenue C where one of my students who created a series of beautiful um, hip-hop songs uh, about uh, the struggles that he's facing, um, they're, they've offered to have him record there. Uh, and then you know, we'll go from there and see if we can promote his music on SoundCloud and maybe get it on iTunes. and. Uh, so continually getting it to the next level uh, aware, awareness of what we're doing as a school, but individually as individual activists, getting their message out um, is, is one of the next steps. Okay, so first of all, you don't
don't do a project that you see someone else do. Do a project that really inspires you to do something for the thing that you want to help fix. Like if this project blossoms and then I, I get to help people survive and not die, one day of this will save the, the 5,000 kids that are dying. And then if you continue doing that, continuously doing that, then that problem will just stop and then that would like make me feel really happy.